righteousness imputed to me by your son, Jesus, by his work on the cross. And I'll thank you for it. In Jesus' in name, Jesus I pray. Name. Now, Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth, the meditations of in my heart be acceptable in your sight. For Lord, you're my strength and you're my redeemer. And I thank you for it now. In Jesus' in name, Jesus. we pray. Amen. 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 Well, good evening. We thank God for one more opportunity for being able to come back into the house of the Lord. We thank and we praise God for his goodness and, we, and for his mercy. We worship him in this church, in this fellowship, with, with, uh, uh, in the beauty of holiness. We thank God. We worship the Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, three in one. We worship you on tonight. We praise you and we magnify your great name. Well, we are the prevailing word of God Community Church, and I am your pastor teacher on tonight, Pastor Anthony Harden, and I'm joined on tonight, as always, at my side, our first lady, my wife, the evangelist, uh, evangelist Joyce Harden, and I thank God for her. I thank God for her being at my side. As we minister together, in the vineyard, the work of the Lord called the Prevailing Word of God Community Church. And we want you to be provide, uh, reminded of the words that's found, that's recorded in the book of Acts chapter 19 verse 20 that declares so mightily grew the Word of God Amen. and prevailed. That is indeed our rallying cry in this ministry is that the Word of God we want to bring to you, we want to live by, we want to be accountable to the Word of God. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Well, we're right back in our Bible study on tonight, and we're going to move into a kind of another direction on tonight. We're going to uh, uh, talk about uh, post-resurrection. We thank God for be having to be able to worship on last week, uh, all the way from uh, Good Friday service, and the evangelist ministered to our hearts concerning the agony agony of agape concerning the, the agony and the suffering during the Passion week, week of Jesus Christ. And then we moved on past Gethsemane on to the cross and then to the resurrection on Resurrection Sunday, which was last week. And we thank God that yes, not only did he get up, but yes. he's seated at the yes. right hand of Praise the Father God. on high. Yes. The Bible says he's now yet making intercession for you and I. The word of the Lord in Hebrew says, we have a high priest now who's passed into the holy place. Amen. He's in the holy temple and he's making uh, intercession for, uh, for us. Amen. We have been touched with the, he is uh, as our high priest. Amen. He is in touch, he's touched with the feelings of our infirmity. And so he can identify with us. And we thank God for Jesus, amen? amen, the gift of God, the greatest gift of God to man that God had to offer. Praise the name of the Lord. We're going to move right into our Bible study tonight. I'm not going to waste no time. I have a whole lot, and it's my endeavor to try to cover all of this Bible study tonight. So if you have your Bibles, get your Bibles out and turn to the book of Romans, the fifth chapter. We kind of started this. Uh, a few uh, uh, sessions ago, we want to pick it up. We want to pick it up in, in our what I refer to as our post-resurrection uh, services or Bible studies. We want to uh, yet examine all of what the Scripture has to say concerning our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. It's our endeavor at the Prevailing Word of God Community Church to teach you the Word of God. Amen. It is our endeavor, it's my endeavor as pastor to teach you, to instruct you in the Word of the Lord. And I want you to grow in grace in, in your knowledge in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we can all grow together. Amen. Amen. I'm growing just like you. I have to grow just to, <laughs> even in my studying to prepare for you. And so we're all growing together in the name of the Lord. All right, it's in Romans, the fifth chapter. And I want to direct your attention to chapter uh, 5, beginning to read at verse 12. You can follow along in whatever Bible that you have uh, at your disposal. Beginning to read at Romans 5, verse 12, it reads, Therefore, 
just as sin entered into the world through one man and death through sin and in and in this way death came to all people because all have sinned verse 13 to be sure sin was in the world before the law was given but sin is not charged or imputed against anyone's account where there is no law verse 14 nevertheless death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses even over those who did not sin by breaking God's command as Adam did who is the pattern of the one to come verse 15 but the gift is not like the trespass here's a comparison here for if the many died by the trespass of one man not uh, one man how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many? Amen. Verse 16. Nor can the, can the gift of God be compared with the result of one man's sin. The judgment followed one sin and brought condemnation. But the gift followed many trespasses and brought justification. Amen. Verse 17, for if by the trespass of the one man, that's Adam, death reigned from that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of the gift of righteousness reign in the life through the one man, Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. Consequently, as a result, just as one trespass resulted in condemnation, for all people, so also one righteous act resulted in justification and a life for all people. Justification meaning a judicial term that we're no longer guilty before God. Verse 19, for just as through the disobedience of one man, the many were made sinner, sinners, so also through the obedience of the, of the one man, the many will be made righteous. The law was brought in so that the trespass might increase, but where sin increased, grace increased all the more. So that just as sin reigned in death, so also grace reigned through righteousness to bring eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The grass withers and the, and the flower fadeth. But the word of our Lord shall stand forever. Amen. Isaiah 40 and 8. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Thou, for the word that you have given us for direction on tonight. We pray, Lord, that you would open up our spiritual ears and eyes and give us understanding that only can come by an unction of the Holy Ghost. He is the teacher. You're the potter and we are the clay. And we're going to wait, Lord, as you teach us your word by your spirit. And then we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. For this Bible study on tonight, I've selected for a topic. Jesus rose from the dead. His vindication. Jesus rose from the dead. His vindication. Jesus rose from the dead, his vindication. Death through Adam, life through Jesus Christ. Amen. Death through Adam, the one man sin. Mm -hmm. Life through, gener through Jesus Christ because of his obedience to the, to the Father and through his sacrifice. Jesus rose from the dead, his vindication. What do I mean? And I'm going to take my time and I'm not going to rush, but I do plan to get through this entire study. <laughs> what do I mean when I say Jesus rose from the dead, his vindication? Well, for our study, let's define the word vindication. Let's define some terms that we're going to be talking about on tonight so that we are clear in what we mean. The understanding might come and all that getting, we need to get an understanding. Jesus rose from the dead, his vindication. So let's define this term vindication. 
as it's defined in the dictionary. The word vindication means proof that someone or something is right. It's proof that someone or something is right, reasonable, and is justified. Mm -hmm. It's an act of vindicating the state of being vindicated, specifically justification against denial or censor. We're talking about denial because many of those, the Bible says Jesus came to his own, his own received him not because they denied who he was. His resurrection proves his vindication against what? Against denial and censorship. Vindication is to free ones from allegation or blame. I was reading tonight where Jesus, the in Mark, the third chapter, where he cast the devil out, a demon out of a man, and the Pharisees and some of Jesus' own family says he did it by the power of Beelzebub. Mm. In other words, he cast out a demon by a demon. Mm. <laughs> Jesus told him if, if, if Satan <laughs> cast out Satan, then he's plundering his own kingdom. Right. And so to be fit for, so his vindication is to free him from all allocations of being a demon and blame. Vindication is to confirm and to substantiate. Jesus rose from the dead substantiates who he is. Mm -hmm. it, it came to provide justification. Mm -hmm. And some common synonyms, I even took time to do this, to give you a few synonyms for the word vindication, is to vindicate, to absolve, to acquit, to ex explicate, and to and or exonerate. Amen? Amen. So his resurrection exonerates him. Amen. He's, Amen. he's exculcated. Yes. He's acquitted. Amen. It Amen. substantiates who he said yes. he is. Yes. The bodily resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, uh, Jesus Christ, gave emphatic proof that he was who he said Amen. he was. Amen. It authenticates his mission to redeem you and I according to the will mm. of the Father. This is the result of it. We are, we're on the other side now. He, he's risen. But what the, what does it do? What does it, it, it vindicates all of what he said he was. They can, exactly. Who he was and what exactly. he said he came to do. Mm -hmm. Amen. Many of them we read in, in, in the beginning of, of, of Passion Week how they laid down palm branches and they laid they strewn, strewn down their clothes and he came in on, on, on his triumphal entry on a donkey and he was and, and they said Hosanna blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord and by the end of the week they were yelling crucify him we understand that they there was a change of heart there was a change of mind there was yet an influence. That, that, that permeated the culture or the scene, so to speak. And it changed the minds of many, just like mm -hmm. even right now. And in, in now that we are on the other side of the resurrection, you yet have those that say, well, you know, we don't believe in a resurrection. Mm -hmm. uh, the, you know, the majority of our, you know, of our American culture, and we have so many multicultural, you know, which is the so-called melting pot. And there's, you know, we were multicultural in our makeup as a nation. And then there have all those that believe in their various forms of religion. And, and in many of those religions, it does not include Jesus Christ because they don't come, to, they have not come to believe in him. In fact, they reject him. Mm -hmm. They reject him in spite of all well-known evidence that he was vindicated by his resurrection. I'm going to speak to that even more clearly uh, as we go on tonight in the Bible study. Praise the name of the Amen. Lord. The bodily resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gave emphatic proof that he was what he was who he said he was and it authenticates, say authentication. authentication. It authenticated his mission to redeem you and I according to the will of the Father. That the prophecies of the Old Testament, recorded by the prophets, were indeed fulfilled by him in every detail. Remember we talked some time ago that back in Ephesians, the second chapter, around verse 20, 21, 
the apostle teaches that this foundation of Christianity, that what we refer to as Christianity, being believers in Christ, this foundation is established upon the Old Testament prophets and the New Testament apostles. Jesus Christ himself being what? The chief cornerstone. So our, our, you know, I don't like to say religion, but our belief system is established upon the prophets and the apostles and Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. And in, in, in that, they prophesied concerning his coming, mm -hmm. concerning who he is, Amen. concerning his mission. Yes. The apostles yes. who walked with him and talked with him, ministered with him, were filled with the Spirit Amen. by him. They gave testimony, eyewitness testimony, authenticating that, yes, indeed, he came to do Amen. what he said he would do. Mm -hmm. Praise the name of the Lord. So the Bible says that the, the Old Testament prophecies, all throughout the Old Testament, in fact, we gave you in our Bible study some weeks ago, we, we, we gave to you the account of Jesus Christ on the road to Emmaus, where he spoke to two men who had just left the crucifixion, and they were talking about it as, as well as the whole town. In fact, they were amazed that Jesus seemed to be out of touch. He's this stranger that they were talking to, you know, he's like, where have you been? Uh, haven't you been, you know, uh, uh, haven't you heard the news? Right. Haven't you got on the internet and found out what's been going on in Jerusalem? How Jesus Christ, who we thought was the one who was going to be the prophet, the Messiah that would lead us out of Roman rule, how he was, uh, he was, he was beaten, he was uh, uh, crucified, and he was put to death. The Bible told, says that Jesus Christ, he began to talk with them, and they encouraged him to come home with them, and he sat down, and the Bible says, the, the recorded in the book of Luke, the Dr. Luke records that he began to teach them from the Old Testament. He chided them by saying, oh, ye slow of learning, should you have not known mm -hmm. concerning the, what the prophets taught that Messiah must come and suffer these things. And so here again, the, the, the resurrection, now that we're on the other side of the cross, the resurrection, he it vindicates all that they taught, taught about him. He's, exo he's exonerated. It authenticates all that the prophets wrote about him. Yeah. Not one prophet is a liar. Not Isaiah, not Jeremiah, yeah. not Amos, not... Not Nehemiah, not one prophet was a liar because he authenticated their word. Amen? Amen. Jesus rose from the dead, his vindication. I want to start out, I want, I wanted, I kind of, I'm already started, but I want to make mention of the very first prophecy that God gave concerning his plan of salvation. This prophecy that was given to us way, way back at the beginning of time. At the beginning of God, uh, when God created Adam and Eve, according to Genesis, the third chapter, verse 14, this is after the fall, after Satan had, had beguiled Eve, and we know that they had fallen. They had committed high treason against God's word. They were now in a state of rebellion to God. And yet the Lord gave this prophetic word concerning his plan of salvation. I, 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 I'd like to uh, term this the gospel, the very first gospel, the gospel, I should say, which is the good news, the very first prophecy and the promise kept. So in Genesis, the third chapter, if you have your Bible, at verse 13, it says, So the Lord said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you have cursed, you have cursed more than the cattle and more than every beast on the field. On your belly you shall go, and you shall eat dust all the days of your life. Now, I'm not going to spend a no whole lot of time talking about the, the, the cursing of snakes. Okay, we can do that in another Bible study. The focus tonight here is on Christ. And, and it's verse 15, and here's the prophetic word given way back in the Garden of Eden. Well, they were kicked out of the Garden of Eden, but way back in the beginning. He said, and, and, and talking to Adam and Eve, I will put enmity between you and the woman, talking about the serpent, and between your seed and her seed, that is, your offspring and her offspring, 
he shall bruise or crush your head, you shall bruise his heel. Now the prophetic word predicted, this is a prediction. This is a prophetic word way back in Genesis. God always had a plan, amen? In fact, God's plan of redemption began at the creation of man. Right. The prophetic word predicted way back in the Garden of Eden that, that in God's plan of redemption for you and I, he would send a redeemer who would, who would be from the seed of the woman. That is, her offspring. It's not the, the woman that I have a seed, but the seed that would be planted with her. Mm -hmm. She would bring forth an offspring. We all know that all generations uh, proceed mm -hmm. from Mother Eve. We are the offspring of Eve. That would come and it would bruise, that is, that this offspring that would come from the woman would bruise or crush the head of the serpent. That is the kingdom of Satan. The kingdom of Satan. Satan it possessed the serpent who spoke. Serpents don't speak on their, on their own, but we all understand. And he's called the serpent, the snake, the dragon, the beguiler, and many other places in scripture. So we know who this is. The Bible says that that in this prophetic word that God gave uh, uh, to the serpent and to Adam and Eve, that her offspring would crush the head of the serpent, that is, the kingdom of Satan, who, who uh, of Satan, who now Adam had forfeited his dominion over to. But in turn, the bruised heel of the Redeemer, it would bruise the heel, of the Redeemer, the Savior, who would suffer the guilt and the shame of Adam's sin and our sins on the cross at Calvary. Now, what do we? What does this mean? It means that Jesus Christ would be this blessed Redeemer. The, the rest of the Old Testament prophets are going to set it up. It's going to set the stage and teach us that He is the Son of David. He is the Messiah. He is that 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 seed of the woman that would come. And, 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 and destroy and, and crush the serpent and Satan's kingdom. But by the same token, it would bruise his heel. Mm. Now the heel that was bruised is the heel of our Lord and Savior. As he bore Adam's sins in you and I, as he bore them on the cross, the Bible says that it pleased the Father to bruise him. He was the one that was bruised for our iniquities, and he and he was uh, uh, chastised for our peace, and all of this happened while it was on the cross. So this is a beautiful picture of how we see God's plan of redemption taking Amen. place Amen. way in advance, and yet it was it's the gospel, it's the good news that God wasn't going to leave humanity through Adam and Eve. Uh, dead in trespasses and sin but he had a plan to redeem us back to himself mm -hmm. and that plan included a redeemer mm -hmm. who that would come and he would crush Satan's kingdom and by the way just as so, some of you that may know this many of you don't Satan is already a defeated foe Amen. He, he walks the earth the Bible says as a roaring lion he ain't no roaring lion but he walks as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Devour. In actuality, he's toothless. He only his his roar comes to scare, but it has no substance into it because right. the Bible says that Jesus is the actual lion of the tribe Amen. of Judah. Amen. 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 And so we see this, that there is no Old Testament prophet that was a liar. Ezekiel told the truth. Uh, Nehemiah told the truth. Uh, Ezra, the prophet, and, and all of the Old Testament prophets, David and Moses, and all that spoke concerning Jesus Christ. Their, he, the, when he was resurrected from the, from the dead, it vindicated, it pre, not only vindicated him, but it vindicated all the Old Testament prophets concerning what they had written. Amen. They weren't liars. Praise the name of Amen. the Lord. Praise God. Let every man, in fact, be a liar in the word of God be true. Praise the name Amen. of the Lord. So then Jesus, by divine appointment, he faced the cup of suffering. As First Lady taught us, 
He faced a cup of suffering as he bare the sins of many. He tasted death for every man, for the wages of sin is death. Mm -hmm. He purchased our divine mm -hmm. salvation. He paid our full sin debt. Amen. He redeemed us out of the slave market of sin by mm -hmm. shedding his own blood yes. and the offering of his body. We're at on the cross. I cannot emphasize, emphasize that enough. That's why we can't run to the resurrection without going through Gethsemane and that cross. Our, our sins that, that were paid for, bought and paid for our redemption, it happened on the cross. Amen? Amen. It didn't happen on the way to the cross. It happened on the cross. Amen. And now and, and he had, and has now placed up Place up and replace us, I should say, in right standing with God, our Savior and our Lord. By His triumphal re resurrection, He has been vindicated, Amen, and proven Himself, yes, to be the Son of God, yes, Amen. Amen, Amen. So then, I pose the question: Why does it matter that Jesus rose from the dead? Hmm. Why does it matter? You know, there's so many things that you know. Right now, we're talking about matter. You know. The, you know, your vote matters. Your political affiliation matters. Black lives matter. You know, but what does it matter? What what is it? So what's the significance? So what that he was resurrected from the dead? That he got up out of that grave? Why does it matter that Jesus rose from the dead? Okay, I'm glad you asked that question. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is one of the foundational foundations upon which Christianity is built. And I say one because I can't go through all of them tonight. <laughs> There's too many. <laughs> but it is the major foundation. In fact, if Jesus didn't get up from that grave and, and, and be resurrected as the word, as all of the Old Testament prophets said he would, we would yet be, as, as the Apostle Paul taught us in 1 Corinthians 15, we would all be made liars. We all be yet still in our sins and have nothing but hell to look forward to if he didn't get up out of the right. grave. So it becomes the foundation. The Apostle Paul says the, the words of the, the, the message of the prophets in the Old Testament and the apostles Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone is, which, is what our Christianity, our belief system right. hinges upon. That's right. You take away the, cro the cross and, and the resurrection, there is no Christianity. If you, take J if you leave Jesus in the grave, there is no Christianity. That's right. if, if Jesus doesn't get up and, be, and uh, resurrected and ascend and, and is seated back at the right hand of the Father, you and I are still yet in our sins. Mm -hmm. And have no hope beyond the grave. That's right. My Lord. 1 Corinthians 15. Let, let me, let, I, I got to read, read a few. Let me, read, let, let me direct your attention real quickly to 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. The Apostle Paul declares it this way. Moreover, brethren, verse 1, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you. Now here's the gospel, and the gospel included that very first prophetic word that was given in Genesis 15. That's the beginning of the gospel. You all stop thinking that the gospel is just Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. No. All of God's prophetic plan began in Genesis 5, Genesis 3. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, wherein now you stand. In other words, that's your position right now, our position. Mm -hmm. Verse 2, by which we also, have, you're saved. Mm -hmm. If you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed it in vain. Mm -hmm. For I have delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ, what? Die for our sins, yeah. according to the scriptures, the mm -hmm. Old Testament prophets. He was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, according to the Old Testament prophets. Mm -hmm. Remember, the Apostle Paul is preaching his word from the Old Testament. In fact, all of the, the New Testament writers, as they're writing the New Testament, they're preaching this authenticity based upon what was written in the Old Testament. That's why the Bible tells us in Romans, the 14th chapter, I believe it is, 
that the things that were written aforetime, they were written for what? Our learning. Amen. We look back to the Old Testament. Do y'all say, well, we don't need the old, the old Testament. We 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 are New Testament saying we live in the New Testament. You can't say you just live in the New Testament. You can't take your Bible and slice it in half and throw away the Old Testament because it's it's one prophetic plan of God mm -hmm. that describes his redemption plan for you and I. It's Amen. both the old and the new. Amen. The apostle says, For I have delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how Christ died, verse 3, mm -hmm. for our sins according to the scriptures, mm -hmm. and that he was buried, and that he rose again the mm -hmm. third day according to the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Now we said it's foundational, so let's look at a few things that's foundational. That his birth, that's foundational, and that how he was, uh, his, his resurrection is is vindicated him, it exonerated him, it authenticated who he is. Then let's look at first of all the virgin birth. Isaiah seven and fourteen says, Therefore the Lord himself shall shall, shall give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel, meaning God with us. Now that happened. Isaiah wrote it five hundred years before Jesus came on the scene. And his resurrection authenticated Isaiah's prophetic word. Isaiah ain't no liar. Amen? Amen. Matthew 1 and 18 and 25 says, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with a child of the Holy Ghost. Verse 18, verse 25, the uh, same chapter 1. And knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son and called his name mm. Jesus. Amen. Just as the Old Testament prophet said, it happened, all the, Matthew gave witness to it. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus is vindicated because he, it proved, according to the Old Testament scripture, that he was who he said he was. Amen. Matthew ain't no liar. Right. Luke 1 and 27 concerning, the, uh, let's go to the deed. We said we, uh, the, the, the vir his virgin birth. And now let's look at the deity of Christ. In 1 John, 1 John, and I hope you're writing these scriptures down. If not, mm -hmm. you can get the, the uh, uh, you can up, we're uploading the video uh, tomorrow. And you will be able to listen to it again and get these scriptures down. But I hope you're writing them down now. The deity of Jesus Christ, the deity of Christ. In 1 John 4 and 15 says, Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. 1 John 5 and 5 says, Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? Well, when he was resurrected, mm -hmm. it vindicated him by de declaring that he is the Son of Amen. God. Amen. So John ain't no liar. Isaiah ain't no liar. Matthew ain't no liar. Luke ain't no liar. And those that wrote about him before, while he, before he came and while he walked the first face of the earth, they, they didn't lie. And his getting up out of the grave vindicated him and all that was written of him. Amen. 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 I'm trying not to get excited because I really want to get this done. On tonight, it's Saint John ten and ten and eleven says, "This is Saint John now, not First John. Let's go over to Saint John. The thief cometh not, but to steal, right. kill, and destroy. I have come, Saint John ten and ten. I have come that you might have life, and that you might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep, mm -hmm. and so when he." hung his head in the locks of his shoulders and said, it is finished. He laid down his life for the sheep. No man taketh my life, but I lay it down. That's a good place to pause here for a minute. Understand that the Bible says that you, we understand what we understand historically from Roman crucifixion is people could, stand, could hang on the cross for three or four days, hanging on the cross. In fact, it was meant to humiliate you. It meant to prolong your suffering. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and they had roads where they had, the, the, the Romans would, would line up people that would be 
uh, uh, that were going to be executed and crucified. That's why they put Jesus up on a hill. We we knew the the, the, the prophets said that where he would be uh, crucified, but they put him up high on a hill where everybody could see it. Right. They wanted his humiliation to be talked about, to be seen. Mm -hmm. They wanted they you know, wanted to strip him down. They wanted to make him you know to, you know to be for all the eyes to see. But the Bible says that he didn't hang there for no three or four days. He hung there for only a few hours. In fact, because of the 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 uh, the uh, the, uh, the Sabbath was coming, they wanted to hasten, hurry up uh, to have Jesus die, and they would break the legs of the thieves. And they broke the legs of the two thieves of Jesus that were hanging on one on the left and the other on the right. But when they got to Jesus, he was already dead. He didn't hang there in misery for no days and days upon end, upon end, right. upon end, upon upon end. When the when the Roman soldier came and thrust the sword of it's referred to as the sword of Longinus, when it smote him beneath the fifth rib, out came forth blood and water. He was already dead. In other words, they, they didn't break his legs to kill him. He, he said, Jesus said, "No man taketh my life." The son of man, I the, I the shepherd, and I give my life for the sheep. I lay my life down. Mm -hmm. He he voluntarily laid his life Amen. down. Amen. If I lay down, I'll, I have the power to pick it yes. up again, yes. which is what he did. And that Amen. was also a more a, a authentication and vindication yes. of what his Praise power God. is yes. when Praise he was yes. resurrected yes. out of God. that grave. Amen. In, in, in St. John 10 and 30, it reads, I and the Father am one that vindicated him. The Jews took up stones again to stone him, in verse 31. Jesus answered them, many good works have I, Jesus answered them, many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of those works do you stone me? Verse 33, the Jews answered him, saying, For good works we don't stone thee, not, but for blasphemy, and because thou, being a man, maketh thyself to be God. Now back to our definition, remember, we said that, that vindication is to free one from allocations, uh, allegations and blame. They call him a blasphemer. He was vindicated of being a blasphemer. He was vindicated from being uh, uh, in cahoots with Beelzebub, St. John, Mark the third chapter, verse 20. He was vindicated of the accusations that they hurled for him, against him, and for their unbelief. He was vindicated in the resurrection. Why is this important to us? It's important to us so that we understand to whom we believe Amen. and why we believe it. Amen. 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 His, his atonement, so we said his virgin birth is vindicated. Mm -hmm. His deity is vindicated. Mm -hmm. His atonement for you and I mm -hmm. is vindicated. His atonement for our sin is vindicated. Romans 5 and 10, verses, uh, fifth chapter, verses 10 through 11 says it this way. The Apostle Paul writes, For if when we were enemies, mm -hmm. we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, how much more, being reconciled, shall we be saved by his life? Amen. Well, if he's still dead, we wouldn't be reconciled. Mm -hmm. if, we're, if he's still dead, we are still enemies toward right. God. Right. But because <laughs> he is reconciled, because of his life, mm -hmm. uh, no man taketh my life, but I lay it down. Amen. And if I lay it down... I will pick it up again. And because he picked it up, we are reconciled and we're no longer enemies to God. He's vindicated in the resurrection. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Amen. Lord Jesus. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5 and 21 said, oh, I, I didn't read verse 11. And not only so, but we also, just, this is back in Romans, the fifth mm -hmm. chapter, verse 10, and now 11. Not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we now have received the mm -hmm. atonement. Mm -hmm. That is, our sins have been paid for. Mm -hmm. Our sins have been atoned 
-hmm. Our sin have been wiped clean. Amen? Amen. It's not that we are that we are innocent, but we are no longer guilty before Amen. God. We're no longer enemies to God. Let me just say this. When Adam fell, he threw all of us that we became enemies of God. God has never been your enemy. God has never been my enemy. We were enemies to God. Amen. The Bible says that we were enemies when we were for, for when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of Amen. his son. Amen. Get it right. God ain't you. Well, you know the Lord is here. Well, listen, when we're in our rebellion, rebellious state, before you come to a relationship with God, before you are reconciled. Uh, unto him, you're you are the enemy of God. God is not your enemy. You are the enemy toward God. But thanks be to God that He we're no longer enemies. Amen. Those Amen. are in in Him because He is because of His life. We're, he's vindicated, he's vindicated us. Amen. Amen. In Second Corinthians five and twenty one, it says, "For He hath made Him to be sin for us." Mm -hmm. Talking about the atonement. He's made him to be sin for us, to be Amen. our sin offering. I like the way the NIV says, Amen. to be our sin offering, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness Amen. of God. Amen. Now, if he became sin and stayed in the grave and didn't get up as an atonement for our sin, then our sin sins are still on us. That's right. We're no longer righteous, but we are yet enemies to God. We're yet unrighteous. We are yet sinners and have nothing but a hell and hell fire to look forward to. My Lord. His crucifixion are his crucifixion are non-negotiable truths. My God. Without which Christianity could not exist. It's non-negotiable. These non -negotiable. these are these that I just gave you again. I can give you, when we talk about the foundation of Christianity, it's a whole lot more than just we can talk about in this one Bible study. But one thing is for sure is, is, is what we have given you, <clears throat> the deity of Jesus Christ, his virgin birth, our atonement from sin, our being reconciled to God. These are, these are non-negotiable. <laughs> yeah, these are not non-debatable. When people come to your door on, 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 on a Saturday morning at 8 o'clock, you know, whether they're Mormon missionaries riding bicycles two by two, or the Jehovah Witnesses coming on your door telling you that Jesus is not God, but he's Michael the Arch Archangel. These are non-negotiable points. Amen. You make them get off your porch. You, you don't have to be rude. Be nice. But these these issues are non-negotiable. When a Mormon missionary tells you that Jesus Christ and, and, and Lucifer are equal, that there was some a competition in heaven, and and, and G, uh, Lucifer was just uh, was just a, you know, a competitor against Jesus, and that they're both a spirit brothers. Make them get off of your porch. Yeah. These are non-negotiable issues. That's right. That's you right. must have uh, have a firm understanding of who you believe in, right. what you believe, and That's why right. you believe it, That's so right. that nobody comes and knock you off. And he said, I've given you the gospel for which I have received of the Lord, which I preach to you, in which you stand. Amen. Now, if you, don't, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Amen. I'm trying to be nice here. I can go a whole lot deeper, but I'm trying to be nice, and my time is almost short. I'm still not going to finish this. Let's get through a little. If I don't finish it tonight, I definitely will finish it next week. His crucifixion and the issues that we discussed already are non negotiable. They're non negotiable truths without which Christianity could not exist. Jesus' resurrection from the dead was the crowning achievement that forever separates him from any other religious leader Amen. who has ever been and That's will right. ever will be. That's right. Separates him. Mm -hmm. How does it separate him? No other religious figure in history has ever prophesied his own death and resurrection and then accomplished it. That's how it separates him. Name, name another so-called religious leader who vanquished death who got up out of the grave and ascended back to, to God the Father, who accomplished in his own flesh the will of the Father, who bore our sins and iniquities in, his own, in our own body, 
how it was predicted way back in Genesis, at the beginning of time, that God would, would, would perfect the gospel, the good news, this prophetic story of redemption, plan of redemption, uh, how we're working out through Jesus Christ, how he would lay down his life, and, and it was predicted that he would lay down his life, and he laid down his life for, uh, for his sheep. I, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life Great for the sheep. Shepherd. He laid down his life, and he had the power to pick it up again, and not only pick it up again, but then ascend back to the Father, where he yet maketh intercession for us. No other religious leader, figure in history, has ever prophesied his own death and resurrection and then accomplished it. The fact that Jesus rose from the dead matters. Amen. I'll say that again. The fact that Jesus rose yes. from the dead. That's why you can't leave him in the grave. That's why you can't. I, I refuse to wear a crucifix. Y'all see me wear these little crucifixes. Uh, my old pastor said, you know, don't buy these crucifixes. Uh, you know, people try to be humble. Is these crucifixes were... Jesus is still on the cross. No, he, listen, he ain't on the cross no more. Uh, the, 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 he, he bore our sins and iniquity uh, and our diseases on the cross once and for all, Amen. the Bible, is what Hebrews said. And I'm not going to continue to crucify him of flesh Amen. by walking around wearing a cross with Jesus hanging on. In fact, there shouldn't wear no images of him anyhow. That ain't Jesus on the cross. It's non-negotiable. Amen. The fact that Jesus rose from the dead matters. Yes. Because it fulfilled all of biblical Amen. prophecy. Amen. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. And I should I should just lay that right there. There's yet some future prophecies uh, that that he's going to yet fulfill. But all of the the prophetic word that the prophecies gave us concerning his first advent have come to have come to pass, just as the Lord said it would. The word is, and, 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 and then uh, I believe it's Peter says also concerning the future uh, promises and, and prophecies that God is not slack concerning his promises. And he, you know, he, his promises is one day is as a thousand years, a thousand years is as a day. God will bring it to pass in, in spite of all of you scoffers who see, keep saying, you know, where is the promise of his coming? God is not slack concerning mm -hmm. His That's coming. Right. He's coming back in his second advent, just as it was prophesied and predicted that he would come in his first advent. God is no liar. God is not slack concerning his word. Amen. Amen. And we have to total confidence and believe in him. The Bible says there's even a crown of, that's awaiting those who are who are eagerly oh, eagerly awaiting his coming. Are you awaiting his coming? Mm, are you living in expectation that Christ could come back at any given time? Have you, has you, have you asked him to, and many of us are, this the part of this Bible study that you're a Christian, but to those that, that will hear this, these words that are not Christians, listen, God, listen, Jesus said, I come to seek and to save those that are lost. This gift of salvation is open to anyone that would call upon him. Call upon me, he says, and I'll answer, Amen. and I'll show you great and mighty things that you know not of, mm -hmm. regardless to what your circumstances, your situation is. I'll show you great and mighty things that you know not of. Amen. You didn't think that you could get out of it. You could, you would well, imagine that you could ever get out of the circumstances that you're in. But call upon me, mm -hmm. and I will answer, yes. and I will show you great and mighty yes. things yes. that you know not yes. of. Amen? Amen. God Amen. wants to save. God, listen, yes. you can enter into this ark of safety. Amen? This, this, because Jesus, the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, that when he was resurrected, he opened this thing up. By a new and a living yes. way that the blood of Jesus Christ is able to save from the guttermost yeah. to the yeah. uttermost. Don't matter who you are, what you've done, where you've been, what you look like, what you have, or what you don't have. The word of the Lord, the grace of God, the blood of Jesus Christ is able to save you Amen. if you Amen. want to be saved. If you desire a relationship with him. The Bible says open, uh, open your heart and I'll come in and I'll suck with you. Mm -hmm. He'll have a relationship with you. Mm -hmm. He'll be with you. You will be in him. And the Holy Spirit will come in and infuse you and will cause you to be born again and changed. Amen. In a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Amen. All right, let me Amen. give you this last point. No, we quit. My Lord today, praise the name of the Lord. I couldn't still get it. The fact that Jesus rose from the dead matters mm -hmm. because it fulfilled all 
of the Old Testament prophecies concerning his first advent. Amen? Amen. I'm going to stop right there. We're going to pick this up. I have a whole another section. I want to finish this up. Jesus rose from the dead. His vindication. We want to show you even more from the scripture why the resurrection of the Lord and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, why it matters. It matters. It, it is the foundation. It is the cornerstone of what we believe. It's he is what we believe and why we believe it. And Jesus Christ, the Bible tells us, Paul tell, tells the, the church at Corinth, if Christ be not risen, then we're all liars, and, and we're yet in our sin, and we have no hope of, the, of, 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 of life after being put in the grave. Oh my God. But he is our hope. Yes, he, he is. He is our victory. Yes, he is. We have victory now. Praise Amen. the name of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. We have victory now. Amen. We have, we're overcomers in this life. He's made us more than overcomers yes. by, through the blood of Jesus Christ. It's because he got up out of the grave, saints. Mm -hmm. Stop with the, he just got up. No, he didn't just get up. He got up to be vindicated, and he's now seated at the right yeah. hand of the Father, making intercession for you and I. John says we have an advocate, yes. the man Christ Jesus. And he fulfills that promise that, that, that Job was looking for. When God spoke to Job out of the whirlwind, and Job said, listen, this ain't fair. I need somebody to, to, to stand between you and I. I need a day's man, somebody that's going to take you by the hand and me by the hand and bring us together. Christ mm -hmm. is the day's man. I'm going to preach a message on that. Christ brings us together in God. He brings us together in relationship and fellowship with him. He and us and we are immersed in him by spirit baptism amen, whereby amen. we can call, cry, Abba, yes, Father. Thank you, Lord. We can call him Daddy this morning, yeah, tonight. And he is a God mm -hmm. whose ears are attentive to the cries of his people. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And, and, and as such, he is vindicated all that was said that he said and done concerning himself. Thank you, Lord, for Jesus. I'm going to ask that you bow your heads yes. in prayer on tonight. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Yes, Lord. Thank you for the truth that's in your word. Yes, Lord. You said by the apostle that the word of God was preached to us whereby we stand. Help us now, Lord, to stand firm. Yes, Lord in the liberty wherewith you have called us, O oh God. Don't let us be, be swayed by every wind of doctrine, by every preacher that comes on the radio, on the TV, what we hear in the airwaves, and all of the noise, O oh God, on the internet. Lord, help us to be centered, to stand firm in you, O oh God. Stand firm in the truth. Praise the name of the Lord. We thank you for your word, and we Bear witness on tonight that you are the Son of God. Amen. And that you bore our sins and iniquities on the tree. You were wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquities. And the punishment that brought us our peace was upon you. And by the stripes you bore in your body, we're healed. We thank you right now, Lord, thank that you. we're not only healed in our bodies, but are healed in our sin sick yes, soul. Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you for your divine deliverance, oh yes, God. Lord. Through the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for keeping your promise, oh yes, God. And we look forward to your second coming yes, and the Lord. appearing of you yes, when Lord. you will come to receive the church unto yourself. Thank, Thank you, Lord, Thank for you. every promise that's in your word. And we receive it right now. Thank you. In Jesus' in name Jesus we pray. Name. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Praise God. That's my Bible study for tonight. I'm going to ask that you uh, continue to pray for us. You that's on the prayer line, continue to pray for us. Uh, we uh, hope that you uh, review those messages that we've uploaded over the last few days concerning our uh, Good Friday service and our Resurrection Sunday morning service. And, there are other services that we're uploading that we'd like for you to go and visit. You can visit those, uh, find those sermons uh, and Bible studies on our YouTube channel, which is the Prevailing Word of God Community Church. And they'll soon also be on our website, the Prevailing Word of God 
cc.org. We're uploading them there as well. Amen. In the meantime, pray for us as we pray for you. Keep uh, that the Lord will keep us uh, walking uh, along the, the footsteps that He has laid out for us. Amen. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. We're going to give a benediction and going to ask that you raise your hand. Father, we thank you now for these that have received your word. We pray, Lord, for you so freely giving us of your word. We want to pray as your servant David that said, Lord, I've hidden your word in my heart that I may not sin against thee. Walk, Keep us safe and sound and help us to walk right before you. Help us walk in the path that you have laid out for us, Lord. You said the steps of a righteous man are ordered by the Lord. Help us to walk in that place, O oh God, that you have laid out for us. Watch over our children. Watch over us as we sleep. Don't let the thought thieves and robbers break in on us and steal. Keep us from that wicked one. Keep us from the pandemic, the sickness and the plague that's in the land. Watch over us and keep us, Lord. And then bring us back at the appointed time with yes, a Lord. psalm on our lips and a praise in our heart, ready to give you the praise yes, Father. right here in the sanctuary. And we'll thank you for it. In Jesus' in name, Jesus name. Amen. amen. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we are absent, one from another. God bless you. Join us on Sunday morning at 1130, right back on the uh, prayer line. And we'll have a message for you that we believe that the Lord has given us. We believe that you'll be richly edified and strengthened in your Christian walk. God bless you.